What's up YouTube, BMR here, and today I'm bringing you guys a slightly different video than I planned. So initially I had planned to have the DRZ up and running today and I would have brought you basically my test drive of this car and, you know, just be able to talk about it a little bit more in depth, but unfortunately I'm having issues with my gyro. So it seems like the gain setting for the gyro is stuck on zero no matter how much I change it and move it around, no matter if I turn in uh, channel three or not, the setting is just stuck at zero. So I have zero input from the gyro. So so basically the car is undrivable right now at the moment. I'm in contact with Atomic. Hopefully they'll be able to send me out a replacement gyro and I'll be able to go from there. But for now, this car is dead in the water. I tried to drift it and it just loops so quick. You can't recover it. So anyways, what I wanna talk about today is this right here, my receiver. This is the Fly Sky FS GR3E receiver. And this thing was a godsend to me guys. So big shout out to my viewer. I'm not sure if you're a subscriber, but I know you're a viewer. His name is Mimnuts. I'll go ahead and post up a little screenshot of his comment he posted. But anyways, he was the one who referred me to this receiver right here. And this was huge, guys. So I was worried a little bit for my setup for what receiver I was going to run for my DRZs because now I'm going to have a couple DRZs on the channel. You need a separate secondary receiver, not like a Mini Z. Mini Z has them built in, but the DRZs, you need a separate secondary gyro system. So anyways, what I was planning on originally doing was getting the Fly Sky NB4 controller and having to get the micro receivers for that. And that would have been at least $300 plus taxes, shipping, all that kind of stuff. So that would have been a really expensive option. And I'm really happy I didn't have to go that route because I was able to pick up these. And what these receivers run is the AFHDS protocol. And what that means is that basically it runs the Kyosho Mini Z FHS frequency. So that means that it can be used with both the KT432P controllers as well as the KT19 controllers. But I would not recommend using these because you can't adjust endpoints. This needs the endpoints adjusted. You can't adjust the endpoints and it would just be a little bit more finicky. But if you're in a pinch and you need a super budget option and you have a KT19 sitting around, well, you just need to get yourself one of these receivers and off you go. And so that's the biggest uh, benefit to these receivers is the price. These things are crazy cheap. They can be found anywhere between 10 to 15 dollars on ebay for a receiver and then if you buy a pack of them if you get a couple three or four of them you can get them for cheaper than that generally but either way guys you know if this thing on the high side was 15 dollars for this receiver that's still a steal for this that's such a great deal to be able to use your kt432 controller with a uh, atomic car, GL car, whatever you want to run. So now what I'm going to be able to do is have all my cars tied into this one controller and all the settings. So right now I have all my mini Z's in there. I have a setting for my DRZ. And then of course I'll have a setting for the DRZ version two once that releases. But anyways, guys, this receiver is really cool. And I just wanted to quick give you guys a couple things to note about these ones. So this was the first one I installed in my car. And uh, as you can see, I have the antenna rolled up. So here's the antennas that come with them. They're pretty long. You can roll them up so they're a little bit more manageable i would say don't cut it i would keep uh, as much length as you can on the the antenna wire but the biggest thing guys is uh quality control might not be the best on these so this one specifically channel one did not work at all so when i would plug uh the gyro and the servo into channel one it would like twitch twitch and then it would lock in one direction and then i removed the gyro plugged the servo directly into channel one and it did the exact same thing. So the signal was coming from this receiver. I tried binding it and unbinding it multiple, multiple times. I was unsuccessful every single time with getting the servo to respond. So I ended up switching over to this one and bam, immediately worked. It was great. It was so nice and gratifying just being able to plug in your servos, plugs and have the thing respond to you. But now my issue is the gyro is unresponsive, but that's a separate issue. So I'll deal with that once I get there. Just wanted to quickly point these out to you guys. Another thing that I noticed, channel three, uh, it's the binding port. But when I plugged the uh, channel three uh, little adjuster for the gyro so you can adjust your gyro gain through the controller, when I plug channel three in here, it automatically went into binding mode. No matter what I did, it would always go into binding mode until I removed one of the pins from the JST plugs. And then it would only go into binding mode about half the time, but it would still sometimes go into binding mode. So I'm not sure if this is just a lemon unit. I got one bad unit um, or what it is, but either way, this thing does not want to work. Uh, this one works a little bit better, but again, channel three is very finicky. A couple times I was able to plug channel three in and it would become completely unresponsive. As soon as I plug in channel three, my servo wouldn't respond at all. The gyro gain wouldn't respond at all. So uh, channel threes are a little dodgy with these ones, but at least you have channel one and channel two and for, you know, five to $15 for a receiver. I still think that's a pretty good deal. 
Eventually, my goal is to get this thing decased and figure out if I can maybe trim down this wire. I don't know. I need to look into that. But what I would like to do eventually is decase this thing and solder all my leads directly into this. So this thing will have a tiny little footprint and that would be great. But like I was saying, guys, the biggest thing for these receivers is the fact that they run the Mini Z FHS protocol, also known as AFHDS. And It'll allow you to run that with your KT-432s or your KT-19s. And for me, guys, if you're like me and you have a bunch of mini Zs, it's nice to be able to keep everything on one controller. I can grab my one controller in any car I want and bam, off I go. And that's what this will allow me to do. So I'm really excited and uh, I'll bring you guys a video of the DRZ test drive. Hopefully sometime next week, it depends on when I can get a new gyro. Hopefully Atomic will work with me. And if not, you know, I'll let you guys know what happens with the whole process. I'm hoping they have a good customer service center. I'm sure they do. If not... I'll let you guys know. But anyways, guys, that's gonna be about it for this video. I just wanted to quickly introduce you guys to this receiver. Once again, the FlySky FSGR3E. These things are awesome. It's a really good receiver. The fact that they're so cheap and they work with stuff that I already have on deck, that's perfect. Saved me a boatload of money, which I really, really appreciate. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be about it for this video. If you guys have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below and I'll go ahead and respond to the best of my abilities. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and see you next time.